What am I? In Africa, mention his name. What am I? Listen, I'm not stopping this work anytime soon. You know why? It's exciting to see that Africans are listening to me. It's exciting to see that Africans are building Africa. It's exciting to see that the diasporans are moving back to the motherland. You know why? I've been telling you guys that Africans will one day take control of their own narrative. And it's happening. The revolution is happening. It's about time you get involved. Listen, give me that song. I'm in Burundi, my country number 27 in Africa. But hey, when you go to the internet and type Burundi, all you see is what poorest country. But guess where I am? Does this look like poverty for you? Is the future. Masa, you make it. Africa is today. Uh -huh. you the and who did this? This is a young guy, just 31 years, who used to go to orphanage moved to Australia and returned back and rebuild his own country. He's not just rebuilding his country, but he's impacting lives. He's not just impacting lives, he's employing people. He's not just employing people, he's giving hope to the youth of Burundians and also to Burundians in the diaspora. A round of applause, man. Can you do me a favor? Like this video now because i know that you will be inspired with the message in this video so i want you to like this video subscribe to be part of this awesome channel and do me a favor share this video so that others can have a piece of this come along with me let's go my brother You've done something that the whole world thinks it's impossible to do it in Burundi. You've done something that I believe that even Burundians think that it's impossible. That's right. How does that make you feel? Oh man, it makes me feel like I'm a champion. And it makes me feel so humble just because I proved, I wanted to prove to the world that Burundians, they are just amazing. And Burundi is capable of doing anything. This is the first gated community Correct. in Burundi. Yes. <laughs> how, how did you come up with such a concept? Thank you, man. Thank you. Me, I've got a long story, but mm. just to cut it short, it was only in uh, 2015 uh, uh, when mm. I went to a country called East Timor. And I was doing so amazingly in Australia because me, I'm a diaspora from Australia. Mm. I've been there for more than 15 years. Mm. And I remember. I was going to perform because I'm a musician. Okay. And I okay. requested them to pull up the Burundian flag before starting to perform. So as I'm looking at the flag raising, I feel like God told me, go and do what you're doing for this country, for your country. And all of a sudden, I took a flight, come here, I came here after 2015 when there was uh, demonstrations here and there. So people did not believe me that I'm coming. And I came and I started a company called Come and See Burundi. Okay. As you can hear from the name, I wanted the world to come and see Burundi. The beauty of Burundi. The beauty of Burundi. Because this is a hidden paradise, my friend. I'll show you Burundi. Wow. Burundi is amazing. When I came to uh, that time, it was a revelation that Burundi needs to be, be built by Burundians, wow. no one else. Wow. And then I came up with these ideas. I started, uh, you know, I started thinking to develop a village, um, a gated community, without having any plot, no knowing where, but in Burundi, you know. And then I started meeting people, telling them I have this dream, I want to do this. You know, it's gonna help the country, and they went like, this young man is mad, you know? They told you that you're mad? Oh, yes. They, seriously, I even wanted to do it in Gitega, which is another city 
and they ended up saying that I'm a, that I'm a thief, that I'm mad, that, you know, I need to show them the money that the white man has gave me. And I told them, come on, guys, you see, we Africans have to, to support each other. When the African, starting from Burundi, hmm. support each other without any doubt, we're going to colonize the whole world. Yeah. I, I want that <laughs> sentence again. Yeah. I want that sentence again. Rephrase that sentence. When, when the African mm. starts supporting each other without any doubt, we're going to colonize the whole world. A big round of applause Boom. for Fabrice, man. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so it's about time African yeah. start supporting one another. Absolutely. Absolutely. What, what do you think is going to happen? I mean, apart from colonization. Yeah. You know, it's a long way to go, but yeah. we started. Now, when you look at people like uh, Nelson Mandela, we look at uh, people like uh, Patrice Lumumba, we talk about people like Ruaga Sore. We have to be like these heroes. You see, the Africans, we like to be kind of pushy back, like, you know, that's for the, those. No, 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 this is the time, my friend. This is the new era for Africa. So all the diaspora, I call all the diaspora, Burundians, all African diaspora, come back home. Let's build and let's showcase what Africa is capable of. Because Africa, you see, when you go in history, Africa used to be the superpower, the global superpower. We talk about somebody like um, uh, Masa Musa, who was the richest man in the world, like in history. But then where did we go wrong? You know what I mean? So let's wake up, my friend. Africa is a sleeping lion. Somebody's poking it. It's about to roar. If you look at this camera, if you look at my phone, there is a mineral came from Congo. If you look at, you know, a plane could not fly. A television could not work without a mineral from Congo. So those who've been stealing from us, time is over now. <laughs> African, let's unite mm. and let's go colonize the other side of the world. You see what I mean? Because we had a great leader whose name Muammar Gaddafi. Yeah. This man has a great dream. Yeah. He had a great dream that yeah. he wanted Africa to unite. Now, I want you to imagine, I want the Africans to imagine, imagine United States of Africa. One army. Ho ho. <laughs> One army, one <laughs> currency, boom, <laughs> <laughs> one people. <laughs> no, uh, we are actually the same people, yeah. but you travel across Africa and realize that we're just same people that were divided yeah. by our colonizers. Yes. But yeah. anyway, yeah. I want us to go back a little bit. Yes. You moved from Australia yes. back to Burundi. Yes. Were you born here? Yes, correct. Did you grow up here? Yes. And at what point did you leave this country then? Thank you. Uh, now, Burundi had been recolonized by the Belgians after the Germans. And they're the one who started, you know, bringing all these theories, the Hutus and Tutsis, just nonsense. Now, uh, Burundi has be, been having a civil war for quite a while, and I was born during the civil war. So in 1993 here, the civil war broke out, mm. and I was only one year old. So my family and I, we fled to Rwanda refugee camp. And when we go to Rwanda, everybody knows the story of Rwanda in 1994. Yeah. The genocide, which actually described it as a Holocaust, you know. And then what it is, is that we had to flee again from a refugee camp in, in uh, Rwanda, Rwanda, fleeing to Burundi where everything we had had been destroyed. So we came here. And we started from zero. So I always say is I've seen my parents coming from being zero to being my heroes. And uh, when I uh, uh, was, you know, eight years old, unfortunately, all my uh, parents died. So I grew up as an orphan. Now, I, wow. became, I became miserable. I became zero. I, be, I literally had no vision because I'm the last child in my family. So my other siblings here, they get married when they were they young. So uh, there wasn't anybody who can hold my hand, you know. So it became a misery, it became crazy. But then I uh, stayed up and I do thank my sisters because they helped me to stay at school. And, uh, you know, I became a street boy. I give up school. I, I'm, I, it was so crazy. I got to the point of 
sniffing petrol. What? Yeah, sniffing petrol. So that means literally. Let, 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 don't, don't, don't stop there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you smoke some gag? <laughs> <laughs> you smoke some gag? I, I tell you what, it was terrible. It was terrible. How old were you? I was only eight, transferred into nine. Yeah. So what it is is that after that, my sister who was in a refugee camp came here to visit in Tanzania because uh, after fleeing from uh, Rwanda, mm. my older sister couldn't come back to Burundi, so she fled to Tanzania refugee camp. So when she heard that I became an orphan, she requested, she demanded my other sibling to send me to Tanzania refugee camp that we might get, uh, you know, visas, uh, we might go to somewhere protected. So I went to Tanzania refugee camp and I thought it was going to be great, but it ended up being terrible. In a Tanzania refugee camp, it was hell. There wasn't food. You know, the UN used to bring us food for thinking that it would, only, uh, it would last us for two weeks, but it would only last us for one week. So for the rest of the time, we had to go and work for the locals. And um, the schooling system was really poor. You know, you would end up marching at school for more than uh, 50 minutes by foot, you know. And uh, there's no electricity, there is no dreams. You don't wake up thinking that I'm going to jail. And think about witchcraft. And because most of the people who fled has been suffered from this um, a mechanism of ethn ethnicity separation, so the hate was so severe in there. It was so great, you know. So I've been there one year, but it was the terrible time of my life, wow. you know. And God does great. We got uh, uh, interviewed by a country we never knew anything about. We got interviewed by Australia and they accepted us. And t let me tell you something. You see, me, my parents named me Fabrice. But if you go my identity, you will find Diodone Manirakiza. Why? So because I had to break into Tanzania refugee camp from Burundi. So I had to become somebody who was Diodone, did not exist. And you see me right now, I don't even know when I was born. I don't know my date of birth. If you look at my uh, documentary uh, documents, it said 31st of December 91, which means everybody celebrates because it's on the New Year's Eve, you know? So um, me being in a refugee camp, it was just that terrible time. Now, when we got interviewed by this uh, Australia, mm. there was a, a huge challenge which came when I couldn't uh, pronounce my dad's name because he died when I was really young, so I couldn't, uh, I couldn't remember his last name. So the white man says, you know what, for this woman, you are stealing this child. Therefore, we go to do a DNA test and see if he matches. Now, the people from refugee camp started saying, oh, it could not match, it might not match. So it was the time we called God and said, please reveal yourself to us because we can't go back to Burundi. Our life has, it's on a finish line. And by God's grace, we got accepted by a country we never knew anything about. Wow. And funny enough, there was a, a huge community of uh, people, refugees, who, uh, because they, you know, the education system, most of them did not get that chance. So they started saying that we shouldn't go to Australia because white people eat black people. And they say we couldn't go to Australia because they make... Um, our body, out of, uh, they will make soap out of our body. Or we might end up washing white people's dogs. And we say, you know what, we would rather be killed by a stranger than our brothers and sisters. Wow. So we took that risk. Wow. And we went to Australia. And I'll tell you what, I've been describing it much more like coming from hell to heaven. The life in Australia has been so good. Uh, we got a good uh, education, um, you know, development. Uh, me, myself, I'm a rapper. I started my music career. I started, yeah, wow. I started my motivation and inspiration speaking. Oh, I've won. You're going yeah. around. Yeah. Motivating yeah. people. Indeed. Giving I'm, them hope. Yeah. I've been uh, first Burundian who done TEDx talk, so which became a session. I've won so many awards, but then it was just that call, man. Like, I'm doing all this amazing thing for this way to develop the country. And it was, uh, as I was telling you before, it was when I went to East Timor 
and I was received by the president. And I was like, oh, man, I was treated like Jay-Z there, yeah. man, you know? <laughs> it was just so great. And then before me performing, I said, put the Burundi flag up. And as I was looking at it being raised, there was an angel of God telling me, what are you doing here, yeah. son? Go to Burundi, go and develop my country. That's how I ended up coming to Burundi. And my dream for Burundi is to transform Burundi, to become a utopia, to become a world sensational country, to become on the top. Because i give you an example. This is CSBU village. It holds a value of uh, 10 billion Burundian money, which is about $5 million. There is no white man money here. There is no uh, Western idea here. This is me thinking. This is me uh, drawing structures and uh, strategies. This is me telling Burundians we can. If you don't believe that, let me prove it. You came up with an idea, did you have money that time? Did you know where the money would be coming from for you to start a bus? No. No. I did not have money. I did not have an idea. But then I just sit down and say, how does it work? Now, what I want to prove to the Africans. Yeah. I, tell, I always look, I love to talk about Bible because I read Bible so much. The wisdom which was given to Solomon, yeah. it has been given to all of us. But who's, who has that time to give it to God and say, God, please lead me? Because we are too busy. The world has become so busy, we don't even get time to talk with God, you know? So what I did, it was to uh, sit down and think about it. And then I started putting uh, stakeholders uh, together. Now this bank, the, the bank which is financing the clients, mm. it's a uh, Burundi's bank, a uh, local bank. Now, the problem that I wanted to solve, it was for the diaspora. Now, the diaspora, me being the diaspora, I used to send money to construct the houses here. And it, it was disappearing. I have my sister who, was, uh, who sent more than 400 million Burundian money. But when you look at the house now, <laughs> it doesn't even worth 100 million. And I say, look, I'm going to heal myself and I'm going to heal others. And then I came up with this idea. Hmm. Everybody thought I was crazy. But I knew it's going to work because I had clients. You know, I had clients. And that's when I went to the bank and said, you know what? Simple. You sell money, right? I'm going to give you clients. You give them loan and I'll bid them houses. And they say, hang on, that could work. And then we tried it. And it worked. But they did challenge me at the first because they say, you know what? We need you to do roads first. So I did the roads first and he had, he pended. They put it in pending for more than a year when I was in Australia. So I literally thought, you know what? Everything is going down. I had to fly here in 2019. And it was only when I landed here with my return ticket, when I started hearing people talking about COVID. And I was like, what, what the hell is COVID? And then I started hitting, they're crossing the borders. So I ended up getting locked here. And I think that's a mission of God because God locking me here allowed me to do this. So now I've gained so much experience. I've learned how my um, uh, partners think. Hmm. I've learned how, uh, you know, the experience I've gained is so, just enormous. So me being locked down here, it's just been great. So what I help with my clients, if you have plot, I build for you. Uh, and if you have money, you bring money, I build for you. If you don't have money, I'll take you to bank and then they will give you money. When they know that it's me building, it will be easy for you to get processed. So I tell everyone, come and see Burundi, come invest in Burundi, come and build in Burundi. Can I see one of the yeah. rooms? Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah.
Look, look at these houses in world poorest country. No way. <laughs> So glad you right. came back to Burundi mm -hmm. um, to support another brother's business, right. which is something commendable. Yeah, but I, I just want to know: you live in America. Right. Why do you want to invest back home? Okay, okay. First of all, I'm proud to be Burundi, Burundian, and uh, I feel proud. I feel like uh, we can change some mentality of people. Do you understand? Yeah. Because for me, I went there just to work, not to live there, because I don't like. To be there. So that's why I decided to invest. Exactly. Back here. Mm -hmm. But some of us, when we go, we don't want to come back. We've not met anyone like that who went abroad and be like, hey, I give up on Burundi, I'm never going back. To go outside, I think there's a reason, two reasons to make people go, go in there. Uh, there is some people who went there just to live there. Because they don't know, uh, they they don't want to uh, live in their uh, original country, and they, they and others who just went there just to find the opportunities, you know. Because there is a job over there, but they know like you know, no matter how long I'm, I'm gonna stay there, I have to come back to invest back home. Mm -hmm. And that's why I want to say thank you so much for coming back. Okay. Uh, we're so glad that you brought American dollars to support. Uh, Burundi and I appreciate you and on behalf of Fabrice, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. thank you. I'll say this is your first successful project yes. in here. Yeah. Was this the first attempt? No, it wasn't. I've, I've tried more than one and it failed. How? Uh, the first one I tried was in a place called Nyabugete and the place wasn't so pleasing for me because I was trying to get it off the government and we went to Gitega where I was received by the government and they showed me the plot, we invested so much in it and it couldn't, uh, they ended up saying I'm, I'm there to steal people's money so I literally, they kicked me out. Wow. So, this, the plot belonged to the bank, which I uh, had a partnership with. And I told them, look, if the Gitega doesn't want it, why not start here? And they said, let's do it. So that's how we ended up coming here. So this was my third uh, uh, attempt. And thank, thank, God, God. thank God the bank did not kick you out here. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the challenges were so great, but you know, it's it's much more of you fall down, you learn how to get back to your feet. You know, you do, don't supposed to stay at, at, the, at the ground. You know, it's much more of coming back to the feet. Yeah. Do you believe in starting small? I do believe in starting small uh, because I did start small. But uh, I believe in start small by having a bigger vision. When you want to make a, a change, change everything. Yeah. Apart from this, yes. now this is sold out. Yeah. Is there any other project you're doing? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> is it here? So, right there, just at the front of you. Come and show you. Dude! <laughs> but I come back next year, you might have 10 gated community yeah. in Burundi. <laughs> This is my second project, which I call the second phase. 
and we are developing the first Burundi's townhouses. So we are doing about 18 townhouses and this is in our uh, fourth week and guess what? Already sold out. Already sold out. Already sold out. How many people have you employed? So right now we use about 300 people a day and uh, on our most popular days we employ more than 500 uh, people a day. So by the end of the project we might end up um, which uh, uh, we might end up providing more than 100,000 uh, employment. At the end of the day, yeah. this project is built by Burundians. Yes. Led by Burundians. Burundians. Financed by Burundians. Yeah. You're an inspiration, man. Thank you. Man. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> See, coming in here makes me want to cry, though. No, but I don't know how. No, don't cry. No, don't but I don't know how you feel because. See, I mean, imagine if there is no project like this, yeah. where will all these people be working at? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm so thankful because now the, uh, even the government has uh, came on board. And I love it because even the president has seen what I do and he's a great supporter. So I think now this is just a dream. This is just a, a pilot project. So within four years, coming back to Burundi, you might find Burundi with beautiful houses, beautiful people, everything good. I really love the fact that you practice what you preach. Thank you. This is Dangote Cement. Yeah. <laughs> Your whole project? The whole project is built by a cement from Dangote, Mr. Dangote. You're supporting an African business? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Africa has to be supported by Africa. And I can't wait. I can't wait to invite Mr. Dangote to Burundi. Dangote, this guy is inviting you to Burundi. I, I invite Mr. Dangote to Burundi. I will host you. I will welcome you to Burundi because look at it. All we see is you. All this building, it's built by your semen. I really want to know what has been your biggest challenge on this journey. Uh, the biggest challenge I have faced was uh, people did not believe me because I'm young. So they thought, you know, young people are uncapable. And the other challenge just being challenged by Africans. Look, you see, the first project, mm. the bank which I was working with, they kind of turned around and said, hang on, maybe we need to pull Fabliss out. But then I don't blame them because we all suffer from the trauma of the colonial system, from the trauma of the walls, you know, which is the message I want to send to the diaspora who want to invest back home. Don't think you're gonna come to Burundi or to your country and expect it to be like uh, America or by the US. You won't walk to the office and they will give you the paperwork at the first minute, no. But you have to understand, to change the game, you must be in it. You know what I mean? So that means uh, all the challenges I have faced, uh, it was just, I, I don't blame people. I think that's the way it's supposed to be. And if you develop a business and don't face any challenge, that's a failure business. You regret coming back? I don't regret coming back. I uh, love being here and I love just to see people happy and I love to think that when I die, somebody will tell someone Fabrice has made a change. So it's all about legacy. Correct. Fabrice, if you have the chance to change one thing in Africa, what will it be? Mindset. Mindset. So first of all, uh, I think Africans need to support each other. Because as I said before, by the time an Africans would really, really believe themselves, believing in ourselves, and support each other, we're gonna change the world. And what you see I'm doing here, this is just a start of the finished product. And I'm just so glad because I know most of people, we got the same mindset. We just don't get the stage to showcase it. So I wanna create the stage. If I have been lucky enough to be where I am, I wanna create a path so a young man from, a Burundian young man in Australia, a Ghanaian young man in America can say, you know what, Fabrice has done it. I'm going to do it too. Fabrice, I just want to let you know that you're an inspiration. Thank you. I'm so glad to meet you. Thank I'd love you, to man. be your friend. Thanks Thank for you. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Forever now, man. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
I really want to, you to go, but the final thing is like if you have a message to the youth of Africa, yes, listening to you right now, what would that message be? The, the message to the youth of Africa is let's go beyond the, what separates us and meet on our common ground. The common ground is we need to make United States of Africa, no matter what it is. Now we have to understand, the history has been written and it's, it's not so good. So we need to write the new history and this is the beginning. I want to say thank you so much for talking to me <laughs> and you. I really appreciate thank your time. You. But um, if someone is from Burundi living yes. in the diaspora or any African who wants to own a home yes. in Burundi, yes. can I trust you that you're going to deliver for them? Absolutely. I mean, this is the proof. If any Burundian out there or any African, either you want to invest in Africa, now we are wanting to open branch in a different region here in Africa, come to us. Come to us. We have uh, happy clients. You've seen them. We are doing everything that we can. So if anybody wants to build their houses, and, and not just houses, if you want to start your project here, if you want to start your company, I've seen how it all works. So welcome. I'm here to help you. Thank you. Thank you very much.